First things first, guys. Um, before we talk about the album, I'd like to jump back a little bit. And Alex, do you remember your first impression of Julian? Of Julian? He does yeah. a very good impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, stand on a couple of boxes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my first impression was, bloody hell, he's tall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, likeable, easy going and uh, good conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, this bodes well. <laughs> because when, you, when did you first meet him or first kind of... Well, we, I didn't know him before uh, we asked him to see if he wanted to hang out and make music. Okay. Because um, I met through, we had mutual friends. Um, Julian had been working with uh, Stuart Braithwaite from Mogwai, his girlfriend, that he'd been producing her, her album. And uh, he also knew Emma Pollock and uh, uh, Paul Savage from the Delgados, who are good friends of mine as well. And I asked them all, so I said, oh, who do you know in Glasgow that would be cool to make music with? And they all said, Julian. So, uh, I owe them a pint at least <laughs> each. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Julian, for, for you then, what was that like? Uh, Alex, Alex trying to kind of... Oh, it's exciting, yeah. Well, he emailed me first off um, and uh, I was on holiday. I didn't expect anything like that. And then, uh, yeah, he was like, hey, do you want to just meet up? So we first met up in Glasgow um, in a curry place, had a bit of curry and a drink, just got chatting and uh, it seemed like we sort of all wanted to do similar sort of things with music. We had similar ideas about music and things that we liked, which was cool. And then I came down to the studio that Alex has in, in Scotland just to do a bit of playing, just to see if uh, that was cool. And yeah, it was great. It worked really well. So before this dinner and everything, what was your impression of Franz Ferdinand? Um, well, I was a fan of Franz Ferdinand from, from when I was younger. I remember the first single coming out and uh, in particular, the Tonight album, I remember coming out and, and really enjoying that. Like I remember Ulysses, when it came out, just being a bit confused by it at first, and I was like, oh, this is a bit weird. But then, you know, the more I listened to it, I was like, oh man, this is a great song. And I feel like that's what we, would, we both feel like we want to do with music, is to make great songs that are a little bit weird. <laughs> well, this is, this is going to sound weird then, maybe, but why? And, and, and I, I, I agree, so a lot of the music that you made have, have been a bit off-center in a way. So, so has that been a, a conscious effort on your part? I think we've always been a little off centre as a band. Um, occasionally, the centre has come to us, um, uh, and then you've got to run away again. Yeah, then you've got to <laughs> run away again, like make your own centre. Uh, uh, what was the question again? Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, I kind of forgot myself. But um, uh, that your music is quite uh, off centre. If that was a conscious. Oh yeah, well, there was a conscious decision. I, I think it's just an instinctive mm. uh, decision. Yeah. Um, what we did bond over was this idea that we love pop music, music that's direct, mm. but also music that's experimental and uh, a little subversive as well, and that you can explore ideas that um, you would really tr it would truly belong in uh, experimental music mm. or, uh, and smuggle them into what we kind of think of as pop music. I, I mean, it's. It's a pretty odd idea of what pop music is, but it's our <laughs> idea of what pop music is. Does that mentality get more difficult as you make albums? No, the, the more albums you make, the better you okay. get at it. Okay. The more, it's like everything, the more practice you have, the better you get at it. Well, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so kind of, when, when uh, well, you had a talk, and you, I, I assume you go into the studios to, to try some things well, out? Yeah, yeah. Like, like Julian said, he came down to um, my studio in, in the south of Scotland. It's a very rural place. Mm -hmm. And of course, when, we, when he got down, the first thing we did was we went to the pub and had a few more drinks. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we played after that. And we came back to the studio. And you know, like that you know straight away whether it's going to work or not. And uh, it did, and it was very exciting because we'd been writing songs, uh, but it was the first time that we heard the sound of the new band and mm. the sound of the band performing. And you know straight away, whether, you know, see if you go to a gig, right, and you've never heard a band before, and when they start, you know within seconds whether the band's cool or not. Right. You know, like, like you know, whether, oh, it's like, oh, I, or you walk into a room and a band's playing, it's like, this is cool, what's this? You get the same feeling when you're playing in a band as well, and particularly for the first time you play together, it's just like, all right, this is good, I like this. Mm -hmm. 
I want to be in this band. And because it, it is quite interesting, because obviously uh, the dynamic of the band has, has changed a bit with uh, a couple of new members. So, and for you, Julian, yeah. was that um, daunting in a way? Uh, it was exciting. I wouldn't, say it was, I wouldn't say I was daunted by it. Um, it was an amazing opportunity, obviously, but I think I wanted to come in cause, because I'd been doing my music before being asked to join the band. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come in with like my own voice and my own ideas. I didn't want to come in and just like think about like how I should be playing or what I should be doing. You know, it's like, well, I'm here and I'm gonna I'm gonna be myself. And I guess that's what these guys were looking for. It's like a collaborator, not, a, not an imitator. Yeah, we, we, we weren't looking for a session musician. Right. We weren't looking for somebody to come in and just play in the style that we had played in before. We wanted somebody with their own musical identity. Like Julian says, a collaborator. And you, you mentioned that you kind of instantly knew the, uh, that, that it was going to work. So do you remember what, what you were playing at that time? I do. And it was a song that's not on the record. Um, but it sounded amazing. It sounded really <laughs> cool. Um, and then, but I, I vividly remember when we played Always Ascending for the first time. Yeah. That was the first song we played you, wasn't it? Yeah. It was Always it was the, Ascending. I remember yeah. when I was, when the first time I came out of the studio and sitting on the rug and then they played the demos that existed of the record so far and Always Ascending was the first song and I was like, yes, I want to be in this band. <laughs> yeah. And with, with, with these new members, how did in your mind, the sound change or evolve uh, f from what you had done before? Well, with the, the last Franz record, it was the end of a decade. Mm. It was the end of a, a decade of the life of the band. And when that happens, and particularly when you have a, a founding member leave, you're faced with a choice. Well, two choices. First of all, do you continue? Mm. And then secondly, if you have chosen to continue, do you continue by doing the same thing, like living in the decade that's gone? Which is fine. You know, some bands do that. And you can choose to do that, that's fine. It's the wrong decision, but, um, or you can choose to like move forward, move to a new decade. And, um, and then is it difficult to do that? No, because once you've made that decision, it, 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 that basic decision to do something new, it means every decision you make from that point onwards is influenced by that. So you pick up a guitar and you think, right, okay, I'm gonna do something new with this rather than what I've done before. You just don't repeat yourself, that, that's all. Right. And, well, I've, I've listened to the album and... and uh, so what's your opinion? you think it sounds new? Well, the, the way I see it, it sounds both old and new at the same oh, yes. time. Yes, I totally agree because it has to be, it has to be... It sounds like Franz Ferdinand, like undeniably Franz Ferdinand. Like the DNA is the mm. same, but it's Franz Ferdinand doing something different. Like. But, but I think, because uh, I read something where you said as well, where it sounds uh, futuristic, but uh, natural, natural yeah. at yeah. the same yeah. time. Yeah. And, and I was wondering, because there are uh, a lot of synths on there. Was that yeah. something that you kind of uh, pushed for? Well, it's funny because, you know, I'm a big fan of synthesizers and I made electronic and dance music before I joined the band, but um, uh, going to Alex's studio, I was like, man, you've got a lot of synths here. <laughs> this is oh, cool. So Pretty so much so every synth that you know. Well, I like, like guitars as well. They're great. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, it's well. um, and you know, Franz Ferdinand have used synths in their music since, since the start. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you know that was something that we as well that we had in common, and uh, something that um, maybe we were both excited by and used rather than it wasn't a case of me coming in and being like, hey guys, let me tell you about synthesizers. Right. <laughs> right. But um, it's funny you mentioned the natural thing because the, all of the songs on the record are live takes. So the whole album was recorded live. Okay. Uh, there's no sequencing, there's no um, computer trickery. Um, so all of the synths, are, I'm playing them like there's no arpeggiators, okay. it's all live playing. Human yeah. arpeggiator. <laughs> you don't need an arpeggiator when you go here. But it's true, like, like, we're calling it natural futurism. So th mm. this is the idea that what you're hearing on the record is the sound of people playing, it's the sound of human beings. Mm. It's, it's a natural sound for it. But while doing that, embracing technology and embracing the future and pushing yourself into the future. And so <clears throat> it's not looking back the way, but it's taking techniques from the past. So when, say, for example, Hal and Wolf went into the studio, you're hearing the sound of those people like, like him and Hubert Sumlin and whoever the drummer was playing together. Mm -hmm. Or James Brown and the JBs, you're hearing the sound of them playing in the studio together. And that's what we were aiming to do, but not to make the sound of the past, to look to the future, but to play it in that way that... And it's not just the past as in earlier in the 20th century, it's the past as in thousands and thousands of years of humans playing it. Like there, there are, um, there's, there's 
artifacts found. I'm trying to remember the age of it. I need to look into it. Like, like I think it's 12,000 years old is the original, the oldest flute that's ever been found. So human beings have been making music for a, a very long time. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing it together, in groups together. So there's nothing new about this idea, but the technology is new. And so we're combining this, this essence, which is, makes it, which is what makes it human or to, to me natural, mm -hmm. i.e. not computer led, but to be unafraid of technology, not natural futurism. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I find that very interesting because, um, well, as you say, in this time, uh, day and age, we, we have those technical, uh, technical capabilities, mm -hmm. but why is it so important then to, why is it necessary that we emphasize the natural part of it? It's, as well? not, it's, not, ne it's not that it's necessary, it's no. just uh, it's something that we chose to do because we feel like it would make a really exciting sounding record. Like the, uh, I mean, the, 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 both approaches are legitimate, mm -hmm. but I think there is definitely a problem where you take the technology, use of technology too far, and you start to be like, oh, that's a bit wrong, maybe we take that out, that's a bit wrong, we take that out. You lose the humanity of it because part of human beings and the human relationships is, uh, the, is the flaws or the, the strange things about it. That's why you become friends with people, because you're like, oh, there's something a bit different about you. Mm -hmm. And if you overuse technology in the making of music, then you, remove the, you can remove the flaws, and that's the best bit. But one thing I want to say is, like, I, I'm not dismissing machine no, no, music or, or yeah, computer totally, music. Totally. Like, I, I, there's some music being made entirely within the computer that I, I totally adore, that I think is really, really cool. But to make something new, you have to reject something and combine it with something else. You know, you have to like push yourself to a new direction. And why do you want to make it sound human? I, I, I'm quite fond of humans. I, I like humans. <laughs> they're, they're cool. I like. I, 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 I want to. Ex I like machines as well. But you know, I, I, most of my friends are human rather than machines. So I'm, I'm fair enough. For that fair enough. Instead.